Tales of Stadendor, The Unlikely Company. Chapter 1 The Sword of Axenar, Part 3. Xander took another step, and then another, before finally departing and leaving both animals on the roadside. Moments after the young man had walked a few paces, he heard the scurrying of claws against the cobblestones. Xander stopped and turned back. Both creatures had vanished as if they had never been there in the first place. He looked around in all directions, from the gaps between the hovels all the way to their thatched roofs. No sign of the creatures could be seen from either the dirty footprints to scratch marks in any direction. Xander abandoned his search with disbelief. Wasting his day chasing down a fox and a cat seemed almost laughable. Xander pressed on down the narrow path and soon emerged back onto the road leading to the market. From where he was standing, Xander looked onto the square and noticed that things had changed. Since he had last passed through, there were now more people gathered into the market. From where he was standing, he could barely see beyond the people to the other side. While he recognised some of them, he didn't have any intention of speaking with them. He continued to search for the merchant. Pushing through the crowd, he came across a familiar face. On the other side of the square, he saw Eric at his stool. He seemed cheerful and was trying to draw people to his wares and goods. Glancing around in all directions, Xander continued his search within the crowd. Darting between the clusters of common folk, the young man remained focused on his search. Stepping to the left, then to the right, careful not to pass too close to the others, all the while holding onto his bag. Not always so careful, Xander grazed against some of the locals as he continued his search. Passing market stool after market stool, he tried to find Pyster, but continued to struggle. Surrounded by a sea of strangers, only isolated him further as his worries gnawed at him. Just then, on the other side of the square, Xander spotted the man he was looking for, that same man with a braided beard. Tillman seemed to be placing his goods into a brown cloth sack. He seemed almost disappointed. Just as he placed the tray under his arm and swung the bag over his shoulder, Tillman started to walk. Even seeing him from afar, Xander noticed the change in his expression. Now he seemed somewhat deflated and lacked his confident bravado from earlier. The droopiness of his cheeks and frown appeared to lament his defeat regarding his attempts at selling his wares. Without hesitation, Xander launched himself forward and pushed past a dozen or so people in his pursuit. Keeping his eyes fixed on Tillman from afar, Xander darted and dived between the locals with skilled agility. Xander was determined to reach him. Arriving on the other side of the crowd, after a great deal of effort, Xander struggled to find or see his mark. Frantically looking around, he tried his best to spot the merchant with eager eyes, yet continued to struggle. Finally, letting his eyes dart in all directions, Xander could feel his hopes and dreams beginning to falter. Without much warning, a hand arrived on his shoulder and clenched firmly. Xander, a familiar voice spoke. Looking over his shoulder, he saw Tillman appeared somewhat dishevelled, yet tried to maintain his bravado. Xander felt a huge weight lift as relief surged throughout his being. Mr. Pyster, Xander replied. I thought you'd still be here selling your goods. Are you leaving? Tillman took a moment to look around the market square with a certain disapproval and a weak frown. It seems I must have misfought when I try to pitch my goods to the locals. While I am sure it is a respectable town, perhaps my prices are a tad too high. Xander smirked as he felt justified by his earlier reluctance. Still, Xander began, if you still have most of your wares, you can return them to your camp, the one beneath the elm tree? Upon hearing those words, 
Tillman seemed to change in his persona, and his jovial politeness soon vanished. A stone wall descended, and showed no joy or any emotion of any kind, as if he were suppressing who he were normally. Grabbing Xander by his forearm, Tillman led the young man away from the market. The young man felt the fingers clenched around his arm with such tightness he struggled to pull away. Some of the fingers on his left hand had begun to tingle. Numbness was beginning to set in. The young man tried to dig his heels in, but it did little to help. Arriving at a narrow road just off the market square, Tillman threw Xander down the road and blocked it off to ensure that he couldn't escape. Staggering forwards a few steps, but managing to catch his balance, Xander remained upright. He looked back to the stranger, who seemed far more menacing than before. He felt concerned, but prepared himself. Raising his fists, Xander braced himself. Tillman let out a snort of amusement. Lower your hands, lad. I'm not going to fight you. Much to his surprise. Xander felt the shock by this revelation, and, to a degree, relieved. Cautiously lowering his hands, with a reduced sense of anxiety, he seemed to ease in his stance, lowering his hands and letting them drop to his side. He looked at the man straight in the eye. Tillman flung the sack back over his shoulder, with relative ease. How do you know about my campsite? he inquired with a keen eye. Xander felt the esquire's gaze fixed upon him with no intention of relenting. Those stern golden eyes seemed unwavering in their intensity. Well, I have lived in Bonwendel County my whole life, Xander boasted in reply. Between picking apples and selling them, I like to go walking. On one such walk, I noticed such a campsite beneath an oak. But we have had no visitors to our camp. I saw it from afar. Tillman scoffed at the remark with cynical disbelief. Xander realised he would need a show of force if he were to appear more confident than he were. Taking a few steps forward, Xander now stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tillman. The stranger stood a foot or so taller than Xander, but he was unafraid. At least he appeared to be. There were only two reasons people come to Bonwendel, Xander stated. They either come to sell their wares, or to chase a legend. Given you have failed to sell a single item, I suspect you'll be looking for something else. A legend, perhaps? Tillman with his free hand pointed to the lad and pressed his finger into Xander's chest. Keep your voice down, Tilburn hissed in caution. Both looked at each other as silence fell. Xander tried his best to keep eye contact, not even stopping to blink. The relentless gaze proved more than enough. Tilman was the first to both blink and break the silence. You cannot speak of the expedition to anyone. Do you hear me? Xander grinned before swatting away Tillman's hand. I'll say nothing to no one. In exchange, I want to join you. Tillman let out a faint laugh before turning away from the young man. Xander stood silently and waited. His mind raced with thoughts as he wondered what else could happen. Glancing from side to side, he only just realised how narrow the street was. The moment of realisation was cut short when Tillman returned to him. If you were to join us, what could you do to help us with? Tillman inquired. Xander raised an eyebrow to the question, but answered honestly. I've ventured into the saltwood now and again, he replied. I could help you with scouting? Tillman seemed to slightly nod his head in agreement. Very well. Meet me and the rest of my troop at the edge of the saltwood. If you're not there by the time we arrive, we will leave without you. Do you understand? Xander watched as Tillman extended his sturdy open hand. Obligated, Xander reached for it and shook it with his. 
When will we be leaving? Tillman withdrew his hand. Tonight. Meet us at the road leading into the saltwood. Thank you for letting me join, S. Tillman once again pointed his stern finger into Xander's chest. Do not make me regret this, boy. The traveller turned about before walking back the way he came. Just before he could return to the market square, a rattling came from the rooftops, which caught the attention of both Xander and Tillman. Looking up to the top of the hovels and the houses, Xander noticed a fox and a cat looking down towards him, only to see them scurry away once more. Tillman seemed shocked by such a sight. Cats and foxes, they seem to be everywhere in this county, he remarked. I even saw a pair of them wandering around my camp. Xander remained silent and watched as Tillman wandered off. Once the coast was clear, he looked up at the rooftop once more. Disbelief washed over him as everything was beyond his expectations. Xander simply pulled on the strap of his satchel and gripped it with his left hand. Clenching his fingers around the worn leather strap, the young man cautiously walked back to the market. If you've enjoyed our work, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Every subscriber will gain early access to upcoming episodes, early access to upcoming comic books, and additional content such as short stories and novels and novellas. So subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes of Tales of Stadendor, the Unlikely Company.